You might say you like vintage inspired watches, but how much do you really mean it? Welcome to Wristwatch, my name is Harrison. The vintage inspired market is uh, very popular right now and there's a lot of different watches that are reissuing essentially old versions of certain watches from their back catalogs from the early 20th century and then bringing them, making them fresh, making them look more new, giving them modern technology. A lot of that has to do with the glass and the movement itself. Also giving them extra water resistance. The concept here is to create a watch that feels old, but isn't old. So you get all the benefits of something that's going to wear and you're not going to have to worry about as much, but gives you that same sort of feeling. And the interesting part about vintage inspired watches throughout the last 20 years and its resurgence has been the fact that there are certain elements that are picked out. Uh, big elements of those are going to be the faux patina concept. So uh, basically luminescence that's been aged. But the one thing that you don't see carry over nearly as often are the case sizes. Now, if you've been into watches for a while, you know that in the early 20th century, most people wore smaller watches. I mean, much smaller watches. A 32 millimeter watch or a 34 millimeter watch on a man, my size, I'm 6'3", with a six and a half inch wrist, would not be unusual. That was just par for the course. That was what men wore. Now, over time, obviously those watches have grown in size and because the male watches have grown in size, the female watches have as well, or vice versa, I'm not sure entirely which one caused which, but now the separation is the same. Women wear smaller watches, men wear larger watches, but exactly where on the millimeter scale that is has increased. And so when I say vintage inspired watches, a lot of that has to do with the look of the watch, but not necessarily the size of the watch. Now, one of those exceptions happens to be the Tudor Black Bay 54. And that carries that case size that you typically would have seen on a dive watch in the 50s all the way up into the modern era and is then shown in a more modern package. What I find interesting about that is that's very unusual. The original Black Bay line is more of what we first saw of vintage inspired watches. They were watches that were, you know, again, they were looking at the 50s and 60s and dive watches, but they were putting it in a 41 millimeter case that was almost 15 millimeters thick. And now they're really going for really a vintage feel, a smaller watch and more accurate to what it looked like back then. The watch I wanna talk about today is this one right here. This is what I would call a perfect interpretation of a vintage inspired watch, meaning that it has all that feel of an old watch, but in a modern package. Now, Forstner has sent this watch to me. I didn't have to pay for it, so I just wanna say that right off the bat. Now, I've looked at their stuff for a long time. I've had their bracelets in the past, but not necessarily one of their watches. The watches is a new venture for them. If you don't know anything about Forstner, they are very well known for the fact that they make vintage inspired bracelets and they really nail the feeling of a vintage bracelet. So if you have a Speedmaster, for example, and you want a bracelet that looks like it's from the 60s to match the watch, typically Forstner is one of the brands you're gonna to look to to try and get that bracelet. Now that they're venturing into watches, this watch I was really interested in because of exactly this. If you look at this picture of the Forstner and you look at the actual F6B model that you would have found in the 1940s, you'd see that they are almost identical. There are a few small differences. I'll get into that a little later in the video. Now the F6B slash 346 is the model number that the Ministry of Defense called this style of watch when they asked for it in the 1940s. What they were looking for was a pilot's watch. Now you can go through different articles that talk about exactly what they wanted and what those specifications were, but they needed to be Arabic numerals and they needed to be highly legible and highly accurate. And they needed to be exactly the way this is laid out with the markers where they are, the triangle at the top. And the look at this watch is going to remind you of an IWC, I would imagine, because their current Mark series is a deviation of one of their classic models, Mark 11. Not only did IWC make a watch that looked exactly like this, but also JLC did. Now, both of these watches you can find secondhand, but the problem there is going to be to try and find one that is in good condition with original parts, which there you don't always know. A lot of times these parts have been reworked or replaced. And then the last part of that is just gonna to be to find one where you're not gonna be scared to actually wear it. The problem with vintage watches majority of the time and why vintage inspired watches are popular is because you're worried about typically wearing it in the rain or having it near you in high humidity. Now I come from Indiana where the humidity is typically really high, especially in summer. And the problem is always that I'm worried on a vintage watch of getting it humid inside that watch to the point where I deteriorate the dial or the hands or obviously the movement, although the dial and the hands are less replaceable than parts within the movement. 
Now look at Forstner's version. Now, while they did not make an original version back in the 1940s, because they're not that old, they are known for their bracelets. And this Bond Clip bracelet is something that you would have typically expected to be able to buy from them. So when they started making their own watches, granted, you would expect the bracelet to also be period accurate. And this bracelet certainly is. What I find interesting about this, more than anything, is not the fact that the form factor and the look is identical to what you would have seen in the 1940s. Meaning that even the typeface, the way that they wrote Forstner on there, the hands that they used with the flat end on the hour hand, the long pointed minute hand, the seconds hand with that arrow looking counterbalance, the large crown, the fact that it's manually wound, the drilled lugs, the thin lugs, all that stuff you would expect to see, but they made it in a 36 millimeter package to keep it pretty close to period accurate, but it's the little touches that I find so refreshing. For example, in the middle of the dial, you'll see an L with a circle around it. Now, typically this would have been either an R or a T, and it would have denoted which luminescence was used. Obviously radium back when it was radium, and then when they switched to tritium, they switched it to a T with a circle around it. Now in this case, obviously it's an L because they're using a superluminova. I find that really interesting and kind of refreshing to see that they took the same sort of element and repurposed the same use to talk about the new luminescence rather than just put a fake T on it or a fake R like you might see from certain other people. I really love that they also didn't add any faux patina. They made the watch look like it would have if you got it brand new back then. Everything's still sterile white. And even on the back, you'll find that they put an engraving on the back that looks like it would have if it were a military issued watch. Now, obviously it's not a military issued watch. They sell it on their website. But the point there is that they went to every little detail and it feels, I mean, when I opened up this package, it felt like I was opening up my grandfather's watch. It felt like I was looking at a watch that had been teleported to me from the 40s or 50s. And a really big part of that happened to be not just the watch face, but the bracelet. This bracelet is exactly what you would picture. The funny thing is I handed it to my father and he looked at it and he asked if it wasn't one of those flexible bracelets because those became really popular as well in the 60s and 70s. But the bracelet feels like that, it feels thin. And a lot of people would say it feels cheap. But if you were to buy a bracelet from a manufacturer in the 40s or 50s, they would have made it out of stamped steel, especially during World War II. They would have made it out of stamped steel because it is the cheapest thing they could have sourced at the time. They would not have been milling steel because it would have taken too much time and cost too much money. And they would have made it look and feel exactly like this. Now, one of the benefits to it is the fact that it is comfortable. It's very light. You don't really notice it on the wrist, but there are some detractors as well to the fact that this bracelet is designed the way that old bracelets were. And mainly that is the fact that the locking mechanism here is basically just two teeth that lock in the gaps in between the bracelet. Then you obviously could then damage the bracelet over time. And you also have the negative side effect of having to find a slot that fits your wrist well and to get those teeth to activate on both sides, which sometimes can be challenging to get it to activate on not just one, but both sides. You have to rock it in one side and then rock it in the other. And so there are little things like that you can expect on a vintage watch, but typically not on a vintage inspired watch. A lot of the time those problems or negative things, especially with the bracelet, have been buffed away, right? Have been repolished, so to speak. So you don't have the same feeling as you would from an actual vintage watch if you were to get one from the 60s. So what I appreciate is the fact that they didn't fix that part about it. Really the only thing they updated here is the glass and the movement. Now there are some things that are a little different as well. These indices look more applied than painted and the dial is textured whereas I think originally they were just a matte. The other thing that's going to be a little different with this watch itself is obviously that size. 36 millimeters is a little larger than it would have been back then. 32 or 34 may have been more accurate, especially 32 in World War II was more common. So aside from that bracelet having to tuck in to one side and the other, and the fact that it loops back on itself and some of the minor gripes that you would have with a vintage bracelet, I really don't have very many issues with this watch. I love the design, I love the look to the point where I've been wearing it for the last week since they gave it to me. Now, typically I'll wear a watch for a few days here and there when I can, but this thing I have not wanted to take off. And that's not just because they gave it to me, that's just a testament to how much someone who likes a vintage looking watch would like something like this. I really, really enjoy it.
Now, in terms of the pricing, you'll see it on the website. This retails for $850. It's got a Salita movement in it, so it's got a lot of good things in the package. Whether or not it's worth that price to you is entirely up to you. It is a little on the higher end for what you would typically see from a micro brand or a smaller brand, especially when dipping their toe into watches. But again, whether or not that's worth it to you is, again, up to you. I love it. If you're looking for a vintage inspired pilot's watch from the 40s, there aren't that many options. There really aren't, especially not one that nails all those little details like they do. I've been looking for a watch like this, a pilot style watch that looks like the 40s and 50s, and you know, I just got lucky enough that they reached out. Uh, so this will not be going anywhere. <laughs> this is staying in my collection. I love it that much. That's it for me and Forstner. If you guys have any questions or comments about Forstner or about vintage inspired watches or you feel differently than I do, let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor and subscribe. It's incredibly helpful to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.